Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Nick. Let's go to you our journeys. Episode 12, The Writing on the Wall. So, what did everyone think of the innocent stare? Well, I'm pretty sure I know why you assigned it to us. Because it's a brilliant example of non-linear storytelling. Because it's a stunning portrayal of life in the 80s in France. Or perhaps because the dialogue is, in my humble opinion, simply flawless. Really, I thought it was because of the romance. Married guy pursuing a relationship with a much younger woman. Yeah, Professor Kendall, ring any bells. We are here to discuss the novel, not anyone's personal life. So if you have anything useful to say about the innocent stare, what's that thing that Professor Hughes always says? You know something about life imitating art? Is it that art imitates life? Is it? Bingo! I should have known Ella would manipulate her students. Yeah, her students is yours too. Again, we're not talking about you dating a student. That's it. Time out. Everyone out. Dismiss class. No, put them in their place. Ginny and Isaac, you two are to leave my classroom immediately. You'll both receive zeros for participation today. What? You can't do that! They'll throw off my whole average! Well, you should have thought of that before mounting off to the professor. Any feelings you have about this book are welcome in my classroom. But it's against the rules to bring in another student's or my personal life. Some was defensive, you too. And some was about to dig her grave even deeper. You're getting a zero for tomorrow too. Congratulations. Don't you think you're being a little harsh? I think I'm standing up for myself and for Katie. I won't let the two of you solely her name in this school. Someone out there is trying to put us through hell. I won't allow it to get worse. You two out. But you heard me. Genie, Isaac, leave. Bye. Finish where he wear his eyes for Friday. That's all for today. Oh, did this day get any worse? Yes. Andrew, would you come by my office after your last class today? Of course, should be around five. Perfect. President Carmichael, may I ask what this is about? Um, it's better that we wait and do this later in personal. You know what this is about, right? Don't you have class today? I'm not going. I can't stand the way people are staring at me. All day long, it's been weird looks and whispering. I can't go on social media either. The rumor mill is out of control. I might have to drop out and change schools. Yes, you will. I know this is rough, Katie. My brother's going through it too. He said some of his students mock him in class today. Your brother's suffering? Ha! Your brother posted the video in the first place. No way would he do that. Well then, why did it come from his account? I don't know, but whoever is doing this is probably smart enough to hack his social media. I mean, Andrew's password has been password since 2006. That's not hacking though, knowing the password. You really think he'd do that to you? I don't know anything anymore. Look, I know that this isn't easy, but I need you to know my brother is a good man. He'd rather die than hurt someone he cared about. His ex-wife, however, would rather kill than see him with someone else like you. You really think it's her? 
Of course, this psycho behavior has Ella Hughes written all over it. Is she legitimately dangerous in love with him? I mean, she's beautiful and smart and a freaking hot mess. Some guys are into that, you know, like Andrew. Well, okay, I don't know if Ella's still in love with Andrew. More than likely, she is not, but she can't stand to see him happy. Or she can't stand to see him with anyone else. She's horribly selfish like that, I'll say. But even more importantly, Andrew's not in love with her anymore. And he never, ever will be again. He cares about you deeply, Katie. Plus, he's been writing again. Like all the time, actually. And he only writes when he's happy. You mean he stopped? Kind of. He wrote a book, but he's too scared to send it to publishers. I think after everything that went down, he's feeling insecure. But now he's finally done editing that book. And he started a new one. The way he's going, it'll be done in a few months. Wow. Well, I'm happy for him. Me too. That's his dream. That and to fall in love for real. Macy, do you think he's in love with me? I'm kidding myself. Yes. I know I shouldn't be asking you this, but I'm trying to know. Do you really think Andrew is in love with me? I mean, has he said anything like that? In those exact words, no. But he talks about you all the time. He smiles whenever he hears your name. He blushes like a teenager when he thinks about you. And he's been so happy since you came into his life. Really? Yeah, and all that spells love to me. Well, you know what you need to do now. Talk to him. I know I texted him, but he didn't reply. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to text him then tell him to meet me in the bar. I'll tell him I need him and it's an emergency. He'll show up for me. And I'll be there in your place. It's a trap. Exactly. Okay, I'm on my way now. It's gonna be another scandal again. Andrew, we need to talk. I'm meeting Macy. No, you're not. You're meeting me. We'll explain later. What do you want to talk about, Katie? Macy says you're writing again. Seriously, after everything that went down today, you want to talk about my writing? Yes, because it's brilliant. And because she says that you're out of a long rut. And she not so subtly implied that it has to do with me. Um... Andrew, whether or not we are together, I want you to realize your dreams. You're a brilliant writer and the world should see your work. I've researched a few publishing houses and literally agents. I've even written you a sample query letter. But if you want me to throw all of that away and let you be, then I will. Tell me, Andrew, is this your dream? No, I'm not sure. I want that life. Because you're not a professor anymore, right? You're right, Katie. I want to be a novelist. That's been my dream ever since I was 10 and wrote my first short story. It was terrible, but I loved the craft. I can just imagine the wood golden tales of Andrew at 10 years old. What? There were something. And when I wrote my first book, I was on top of the world. I almost got it published, you know. I had someone interested. Ella Huge. Really? Yeah, but then I started second guessing everything. But then my parents had died and I was taking care of my sisters. 
then Ella happened and I never had the courage to get back into it. I'm sorry, Andrew. I got into academia because it was presented to me and it was a good stable job and I needed it at the time. Please tell me you're ready to make a chance on yourself now. Oh, I'm ready. So ready to throw the professor title. Kitty, whatever fate has in store for my career, no one has ever done anything like this for me before. Encourage me, supported me. I, there's no point in hiding my feelings any longer and pretending I don't love you. You love me? I do. I love you, Katie. I know it's soon to say, but I know what I feel. I not. I'm not ready yet. I love you too. I do, Andrew. I love you. Really? So much? And you're right. It is fast. And yes, it's the first time I've ever said to it to a man. But I love you so much. Whatever happens, we'll make it through, Katie. I promise. Our love is worth fighting for. It feels so freeing to finally say it, Andrew. I know. I feel like I'm on top of the world again. So can I kiss you now? Won't we? We are already in trouble. I am anyway. I have a meeting at 5 with President Carmichael. I'm probably getting fired. That's why you want to start writing. No, Andrew. It's okay. I can handle it knowing I've got you here for me. Kiss me, Andrew. And you're gonna need a new school soon, Katie. I better go. I'll call you later. Good luck. Just a little luck. Thank you for, for watching. Have a wonderful day. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And see you guys on our next journeys.